will be a session for geared towards the appraisers. It's not going to be a demonstration of the entire system. I'm going to concentrate on the pieces that I believe appraisers use in the system. The board also offers, offers and will be offering, offering a class um, that goes through the entire system if you do have more needs than what we go through today. But this is geared towards the actions that I believe that the appraisers use inside the system. The first most important thing is to learn some of the differences in searching. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to run a normal type search. I'm going to go in and run a residential quick search. And some of the differences in tab in fields that have multiple selections, table driven type fields, to, in order to select multiple selections, if you just click on them, it'll only select that one selection. If you need multiples, you need to use your control key or your command key on a Mac, and you can select as many features as you need. If you want to turn one of the selected ones off, if you just click on it, it will turn all the others off. So in order to turn any of the highlighted ones off, you'll again use your control key or a command key on a Mac, and you'll select the ones that you want to turn off. All of the fields on a search screen are going to be included with a question mark in front of the field. If you ever forget how to use that field, if you click on the question mark, it will tell you the same information I've just told you. Now, as far as numeric fields, price, bedrooms, baths, your bill, those type of features, if you type in a number, we'll type in 300, for example, that's exactly 300. And you'll see down here in the bottom left corner, as you're making selections, it's going to run the search and tell you how many matches you have. In this case, we have nine matches. If you want 300 or more, you would put a plus sign behind it. And in the entire system, we have 1,617 active listings that are 300,000 or more. If you want 300,000 or less, you follow the numeric value with a minus sign, and we have 4,714. So as I'm typing in information, it's including it in the count on the fly down here, so you can immediately see how many matches you have. Now that applies to all your numeric fields. So for example, if I go to total beds and I put in four, that's exactly four bedrooms, and there's 1,109. If I want four or more, I would put the plus, and now we have 1,217. If in the case of appraisal, you only want, for example, 400, four and five bedroom, you put 4-5, and you have 1,199. So as you're typing in the information, it's automatically updating your count on the fly at the bottom. If we come down, if you need to add any additional fields, for example, these are the fields that are provided on the search template. But if you need an additional field for some reason, maybe you want to know if they have a pool or if what stories it is, that type of thing. If you come down to add, you can add, these are the fields that you're avail are available to you to add to a search screen. These are the additional fields you have selected. So I'm going to go ahead and add a field that has remarks. I'm going to put realtor remarks. I'm going to add it to my search screen. And now when I go back to my quick search, down here at the bottom, I have the Realtor Remarks. Once you put something there, it'll remain there until you remove it. To remove it, you just go Add, Remove, and you move it back over to the left-hand side. In the text fields, fields that people can type into, Remarks, Street Name, etc., 
your wild card that you would use in there is the asterisk. So for example, if I want to see any realtor remarks that contain the word short, I'd put asterisk, short, asterisk, that means anywhere in that field it has the word short. And there are 70 listings out of those 1,100 that have the word short in it. If I want to get rid of any field that have the word short in it, any of those listings, I would put an exclamation point. And that will remove any field that contains the word short anywhere in the text field. Again, your question mark at before the field will tell you the exact same information I just told you. So if you ever forget, you can always use the question mark. Let me go ahead and lower down my results sum, and let's go back to total beds, and let's say exactly five, and there's 89 matches. You can move to the map and see where those properties are located on the map, or you can also go directly to results. On the map, if you click on any of the homes, it will show you a little thumbnail, information about the home. You can always click on the MLS number and that would show you the full display. But typically, once you've put your criteria in, you'll go to results. Under the results, this is your single line grid that was created by the board. Underneath displays, you have other displays that you can view. For example, the agent pull. So there's the agent pull information. You can go through listing by listing on the agent pull. Going back to the single line, if you want to make any changes to your single line, for example, I want to see the postal code, the zip code. I can click anywhere in this field except directly on the text for that field, and it will give me this box where I can insert columns. And let's say I want to add the postal code, so I'll start typing it in. There it is. I'll apply it. Now it's on my screen. You can also change the way the screen looks. If you want your list price back here in the beginning, you can click and drag it to the beginning. Any of these fields that are on here are sortable. So if I want to sort the list price descending, I click. And now it's descending. Or I could sort on the address. So you can go from field to field and sort on any of the fields that you want to. If you make changes to this screen, and this is something you want to view this way going forward, you can come up here to this little icon over here next to the displays. You can click on them. Type it in the name for this display. I'll just call it AP, for example, and I'll save a copy. Now, underneath the displays, in addition to the ones the board defined, I have my AP. If you set this screen up the way you want it, maybe you want the agent full, maybe you want the one that you customize, or the single line, but you only want 10 per page, because you're on a small display. Or you may want 100 per page so you can scroll through the listings very quickly. Once you have it set the way that you want to see your default going forward, you would press on the gear and you could set that current display sort order and count per page as your starting default. From then going forward, when you go to results, you would see that display. You could always switch to any display you wanted for a given search, but then your next search, you would go back to whatever you have set as your default. There's some icons on all of your displays. First one being if you hover over them, they'll show you what the display icon stands for. If you click on it, for example, there's your photos. These are the current size photos that you will see coming over from the old system. 
but once Matrix is your primary system and you're uploading photos into Matrix, this screen will be full. It'll be a nice large photo. You can move through the photos. You can look at the photos in a different format. If you click down here at the bottom on the thumbnails, you'll see all the small thumbnail images. Or if you click on the medium size, you'll see the medium size images along with any comments that the agents put on the photos. So there's different ways to look at the images. The next icon over, and let's see if we can sort by list price and get maybe some more expensive homes. The next one is the map view. If you click on the map view, you'll see where the property is located on the map. You can also zoom in and get a nice close-up look view of the property. You can also use any of your layers, your boundary layers, such as flood zones, that type of thing. Your parcel characteristics, if you want to put on each parcel, for example, the owner name, you can add that to it. Your trends, there's different trends that you can put overlays on the screen. And then there's also some points of interest where you could locate different points of interest. So you have all your layers available to you. A new feature that's in Matrix is you have the ability, if it's available, to view the Google Street View. If you click on the Google Street View, it's going to show you what the property looks like from the road. This one's loading. Not only can you see what the property looks like from the road when it loads, let's go back and load a different one. See if we can get one to load quickly. There we go. Google Street View. There we go. Still not completely loaded, but you get the idea. You can turn around, you can look what the property across the street looks like, you can walk down the block and see what the neighborhood looks like. So there's different ways to look at the properties in the area using your map view. Your next icon will show you the realist tax record. So you can see all of the appraisal district information, but you can also see other information that realists provides through the core logic features like last market sales and sales history, mortgage information, owner transfer information. If there was any foreclosed information, it would show on here. So there's lots of valuable information. Um, this would be any documents attached to the listing. The next one, the history, will show you the history of that product, that listing. If it's been on the market numerous times, it'll show you the different times that it's been on the market that's in the database. So that's also valuable to you appraisers. And from here you could run your 1004MC search, but I'm going to start my 1004MC search through a normal routine. So I'll go into search. And in order to do a 1004MC search, you'll want to come down under cross property. And then you'll have available right there your 1004MC search, which you can click on. And it'll open up another search template, very similar to the quick search template. But there's some fields hidden in the back here. For example, the date range will be 365 days back. The status, it'll include all statuses because that's needed in order to produce that report. If you need to add any fields, 
you have the ability to add additional fields to narrow down your results. But I'm going to start this search from a map search. Now typically I would think you would come up here to the jump to address and under the jump to address you can type in an address. We'll say 1012 Concord. We'll hit enter. It'll show you this is a Bing search, so it's going to show you all of those addresses, whether or not they've ever been in the MLS. So it does not have to be an MLS listing. This is just an address in Oklahoma. We'll do the one on Edmond. It puts a pin on the map and identifies where that property is located. To select your listings that you want to use for the 1004MC search, from here you can draw different shapes. You can draw a polygon. Polygon is a multi-sided shape. You can make it any direction that you want. I'm clicking every time I want to set down a line. I can go wherever I need to go. When I'm done drawing my polygon, I would come back to the original dot. I click again. That would set my shape and these would then be the listings that I would use. Or you could draw a rectangle. Rectangle, I click to start my shape. And then I click again to end my shape. And now these would be the listings that I would use in my 1004MC search. Lastly, you have the circle. And for a circle, you would go to your starting point, which would be the subject property. You'd come out the distance that you want, let's say half a mile. Click again, it would set that shape. Now that I've defined the listings that I want to use, I can always go back to criteria and add additional criteria. Before I do that, I want to show you one additional feature that's in the map searching. Let's say, for example, I know as an appraiser or educated appraiser that these listings right here are going to throw off my numbers. Maybe it's a mobile home park in the middle of this, this area. Or maybe there's a gated community with million dollar homes that are going to skew all my numbers. I can come up here to the, any of these shapes and I can draw an additional shape. And let's say this is where that gated community is. Those listings would throw off my statistics. So I want to click, set that shape. Then I would go back to the dot associated with that shape. And I can exclude that shape. When I do that, the houses in that area go away. So they won't be included in my results. Going back to criteria now, if I wanted to narrow it down to a certain price range, I could put a price range in, bedrooms, whatever information you need to narrow your results down to only be the information that you want to include in your 1004MC. I would then go to results. I would select, if any of these, I would select all of my results. And if there's any specific listings that I know is going to throw off my result set, I can go and remove any individual listings I would need to. Then all I'd have to do to complete my 1004MC is go to print. I would select the 1004MC market condition summary. And I'll print it to PDF. And as you can see, your ending result would be your 1004MC report, along with all the data included in that report. So the process to create your 1004MC is a very simple process. When you have your result set that you want to use, You'd select all of them, go to print, 
10.04 MC market condition summary and print. That's how easy it is in Matrix to produce your 10.04 MC. There's a couple items and other items in the system that I feel would be beneficial to you. When you're looking at your result set, like we looked at earlier, let me just go back and pull up results. When you're looking at your result set, this is a display. These are the fields that you see on your display. I think for an appraiser, you may want different fields on your display. Again, you could do that utilizing the method I showed you earlier by clicking on any of the field other than in the header, the actual text, and you could insert columns, move them in the order you want, and save it from here. But you can also go to My Matrix, Settings, and you create your own custom displays. All you would do to create a custom display, you'll see here, here's that AP one that we designed a minute ago. I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to add a new one. I can have as many displays in here as I need. If I go to add a new one, these are all the fields that you're permitted to put on a display. These are the fields that are on the display. So I could either start selecting fields from here and moving them over, or I can go down to the bottom here and I can type in like I want the MLS number. There's the MLS number. I also want, oops, I wasn't ready to save yet. I also want my list price. I can move it over. Um, let's say I want the um, address. I can move the address over. And so on and so forth. I can move over any field I need to. And then I can place them if they're not already in the right order. I can place them in the order I want them. And now this will be the fields that I see on my display in this order. I would name it, I'll just call it APP, appraiser. I'll hit save. And now whenever I go to results, I'm looking at listings, that display will be available to me. Custom exports works exactly the same way. This is if you want to export data out of the system. You would go in to add export. Again, these are all the fields you can export. These are the fields that are in your export, and you would put them in in the order that you want them to be exported. And then whenever you're on results, we'll just go ahead and pull up some listings. And at this point, I'm also going to show you another search feature. It's called the speed bar. I really don't think it's of much use to appraisers, but it is available to you. For example, I'm looking for active listings only in zip code 73003, and I only want residential, and I want listings between 100 and 300,000. I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter at this point, and it's showing me I have 42 matches. Let's say I only want ones that have three or more bedrooms, two or more bedrooms. I'll go ahead and hit enter again. That takes us down to 34. But I only want ones that are between 1,000 and 2,000 square feet. We're at 34 now. When I hit enter, we're down to 22. So this is called your speed bar. This information I put in could have been put in any order. I could have put the price first and then the zip code and then active res in any order that I want. 
The only ones that order matters is bedrooms and bathrooms. Bedrooms needs to be first, bathrooms second, and they need to be together. Otherwise, I could put this in any order that I wanted. You can also create your own speed bar searches, and I created one for one-story homes, and I named it slash one. When I hit enter, this, oh, I don't have this added in this login. So let me, quickly, I can't highlight it. it won't let, me, let me quickly log out. Let me log back in as myself. I'm looking for active residential. And I'll put them in a different order. I'll say between 100 and 300 with 3 plus baths, 2 plus, oops. Three plus baths, beds, two plus baths, um, and I'll add my zip code, 73003, and now I'll put my slash one, and you'll see I'm now down to 27. To design your own speed bar shortcuts, I would start a brand new search. I would clear all information because sometimes I may be looking for sole listings that have one bedroom, that type of thing. Let me go and add, we'll add another field. We'll call it pool, pool yes, no. I'll add it. Again, if any time you want to remove any fields, you would click on it and remove it. I'll now save, and now I have pool at the bottom. So if I want to add as part, one of my speed bar searches, if it has a pool, the only criteria I would put in is pool yes. And I've got, uh, let's 5,000 matches because it's pulling all statuses, any listing that has the word pool in it. I would then go to results, save, new speed bar shortcut, leave the slash in the beginning, that's what identifies it as a speed bar shortcut, put in any word that you'll remember. I'll just put PP because I already have one is P, one is pool. I'll just call it PP. And now I can go in here. I now have a speed bar shortcut. So if I'm looking for active listings in 73003 that has a pool. Oh, PP as I called it. And for active it's ACT. And I would now hit enter. And there's four listings in that zip code that contain a pool. So it's that easy to set it up. You can set up a speed bar shortcut for anything you want. You could even draw a shape on the map that's maybe your market area, that type of thing. And then you could name it, and then it would use that as your criteria. So that's how to create your own speed bar shortcut. For a list of capabilities in the speed bar, if you click on the question mark, it's going to show you what you can search for in the speed bar. The speed bar is not just for listings. For example, if you need to contact an agent about a property, if and you would type in AG, and let's say I know their last name Smith. And there are all the Smiths. If I knew their first name started with D, I could put D asterisk. Remember your wild card. And there's the D Smiths that are in the system. I could also search for an office. OFF. And I know it's a Coldwell Banker office, so I'll use my wild card again. I'll hit enter. And there's the Coldwell Banker offices. And from the agent or the office, you can go to the full display and get whatever information's 
you need. There's one less feature I'd like to show you. I don't know how useful it will be to you, but it may be. Under stats, there's a lot of predefined statistics here, like historic sales by price. I'll generate that. That's not the one I wanted. Medium sale price is the one I think I wanted. Yes. And that's showing me over the last 10 years in the entire MLS, this has been the trend for the sale price. Not only does it give me the chart, but if I click on data, it'll show me the data that was used to produce that graph. And if I hit export, it would actually export it into Excel or whatever product you want to use. And then it would be available from that product that you can do whatever you need it to with it. You can also customize these. So for example, this chart here is showing me the sale price median. Well, let's say I want to customize it and I want to, instead of the last 10 years, I only want to show the last year. In addition to the sale price median, I also would like the list price. So I can come down here to advanced options. I can add any of these that I want. I'm just going to go ahead and add the original price median. And instead of column, I want it in a line format. I'll now generate and it's going to generate just for the last year the sale price and the list price. And again, under the data, I would have both of those information as data. But I've been doing these statistics for the entire MLS. You can also go in to search and you can get statistics on any information you want. A certain price range of homes, a certain community, school district. Let's just go ahead and get the statistics for 73003. We'll regenerate it and now it's just going to show us statistics for that specific zip code. So we can see if the prices have been going up, if the prices have been going down. We can go back and if we'd like and do it for the last five years and generate it. Any of these statistics that you create, you have the ability to save them. And then you could save them so you could refer to them at any time. Along with saving them, if you wanted to, you could actually save them onto a home page widget. So it would put a link on your home page and I'll go ahead and do that. And now you'll see when I come back to my home page, I've got that statistic right here that I can refer to. That's the general functionality in Matrix that you folks, I believe, as appraisers would use the system for. If you'd like a full overview of the system, as I said earlier, the board offers classes where you could actually sit through a class and you learn all of the functionality inside the system. But I think what we went through today should help you in your appraiser functions to use the matrix system. Thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of your day.